Praise the Lord. I said, Praise the Lord. Jesus will care for you. And no matter what you are going through, he knows just what to do. I welcome you to the service this Sunday in Jesus' name. The Lord is going to touch everyone, even now in Jesus' name. And whatever challenge you have, whatever you are going through, at this moment, he knows just what to do for you. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you at this time because of the great things you are doing. I will thank you because you brought everyone here, our leaders, our workers, our members, and our new members to you. Lord, I pray you impart every life, even at this time, in Jesus' name. Destroy the works of the devil. Whatever we have dragged up to this point in our lives, we should not be there. Cut everything away in Jesus' name. Lord, you know just what to do for everyone. Do it for everyone in Jesus' name. Manifest your power in our midst today. And Lord, I pray you make everyone stable, solid, steadfast in the way of the Lord in Jesus' name. Thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 2. I'm reading from verse 40, 41, and verse 42. Acts, chapter 2, verse 40. And with many other words, did he testify and exhort, saying, Save yourself, rescue yourself, separate yourself from this unto what? wicked, perverse, evil generation. Then, they that gladly received his word were baptized, and the same day there were added unto them about 3,000 souls. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and breaking of bread and in prayers. We're looking at the word of God this morning on the dominant faith of steadfast believers. The dominant faith of steadfast believers. Already, as you have believed on the Lord Jesus Christ, you turned away from your past and you turned to the Lord Jesus as your master, as your savior, as your king, as the new director and controller of your life. You know what it means to be a believer. You need to add another word to that believer. A steadfast believer. A believer that is steadfast in the Lord, that will not look back again, that will say, I am following the Lord and there is no turning back a steadfast believer. There is something about a believer. What you need to have in your hand, in your life. Faith. The kind of faith that moves every mountain, every session, every day of your life. And it is a kind of faith that dominates. Dominant faith. It's an all-controlling faith. It's a kind of faith that whenever the devil tries to play any trick around you, you bring that faith out every time Satan will be conquered in your life. And this weekend, the Lord has given us a great demonstration of what faith is. What I want to do now is to leave that faith with you here and to have it in your heart, and to have it in your home, and to have it everywhere you go. From now on, you'll be a victor. From now on, you're a conqueror already. And you'll be more than conquerors in Jesus' name. Hebrews chapter 11. Hebrews 11, 
I'm reading from verse 1. It talks about faith, beautiful things about faith. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. There are many things you've been hoping for in your personal life. I hope this will happen. I hope this will come. I hope I'll get this. I hope things will turn around. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. Once you have that faith, you have the title deed. You have the C of O. If I can use that language, the land is there. The certificate of occupancy that you have the possession of that property that's the faith that's in your hand. And then it says, it's the evidence of things not seen. There are many things you are asking for. I want to see this. You have not seen it yet. But this day, as you have the faith, the evidence that you are a possessor from this day, that evidence is there already now. You are a carrier of miracles. A possessor of inheritance in Jesus' name. Great things in your life. Marvelous things in your life. Things that you have been dreaming about and thinking about and planning about. And the things that you have been hoping. Will this happen? The Lord sent me to tell you that what you have seen already is an evidence that great things will be happening in your life until you see him face to face. Yeah. In verse 2, for by each that is by faith, the elders obtained a good report. Through faith, we understand. Through faith, we understand. There are many things you'll never understand without faith. If you don't have faith and you're walking only with your mind, only with your brain, only with natural knowledge. There are things you'll never understand. Things of the past and things of the present around you and things of the future, you'll never understand. Even, even if you're a scientist, scientists don't understand because they don't have faith. That's why they try to kind of theorize. They bring up a lot of theories and they're changing those theories every time because they do not have the understanding of what I'm going to read now. Verse 3, through faith, we understand that the words were made by the word of God. He said, let there be, and there was. Let there be light, there was light. Let there be sun, there was sun. And let there be the moon, there was the moon, and the vegetation and everything. He spoke everything into existence. And that is what the Lord is still operating today. And it's, it's still the action, the activity of authority coming from the Lord. And when the Lord speaks into your life, into your family, it will be so in Jesus' name. So that the things which are seen, are not made of things which do appear. Verse 6. For without faith, but without faith, whatever else you have, without faith, you have natural knowledge. If you're not faith, you have some natural experience. If you don't have faith, you have some natural understanding. If you don't have faith, you have some substance. Well, without but you don't have faith. Without faith, you even have religion. And if you don't have faith, but without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe. There are many people that go to, they go to church, they go to assemblies, they go to fellowships, they go to places where they mention the name of God. But they do not believe on the Lord Jesus Christ who died for us on the cross of Calvary. 
And because of that not believing, the worship is in vain. The religion is in vain. The morality is in vain. And all the good works, they are in vain. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. And so you find that Hebrews chapter 11, field of, of people that have great faith, dynamic faith, dominating faith, and they have dominant faith. After he has given us about Abel, about Enoch, about Abraham, about Noah, about Sarah, and about Moses, and then the rest of them. He now tells us in verse 32, he says, And what shall I say more? What shall I still say? For the time would fail me to tell of Gideon and of Barak and of Samson and of Jephthah and of David also and Samuel and of the prophets who through faith subdued kingdoms. He begins to tell us that these people that laid and they did the impossible and they experienced the incredible and they had the unbelievable in their lives to the point they even subdued kingdoms and that they wrought righteousness. They obtained promises and they stopped the mouths of liars. He said, the one thing you'll find in their lives is this dominant faith. And if you can have this dominant faith all through your life, you'll never find anything impossible. You'll be having miracles every day. The power of God manifested in your life every day. Look at verse 34. They quenched the violence of fire and escaped the edge of the sword. Out of weakness were made strong. You're not weak anymore. You'll be strong in Jesus' name. Then it goes on to say, the wax valiant in fight, and it turns to flight the armies of the aliens. But it doesn't stop there. It tells us something in verse 39 and verse 40. And these all, having obtained a good report through faith, received not the promise. That is, there is still a promise that we can have today. A kind of supernatural life that we can experience today. A kind of manifestation of the possibilities and the prospects and the exploits of faith that those people that we have read about that they didn't have that you and I can have today. And I pray God will drop this in your heart. It says in verse 40, God, having provided some better things for us, God, the almighty God, the God of love and the God of power and the God of compassion and the God who knows about you, the God who knows your need and the God who knows what you are going through, who is going to bring solution to every problem of your life this year. That God has prepared better things for us that they, all those old covenant people, they without us should not be made perfect. That's why I come to talk to you on the dominant faith of steadfast believers. The dominant faith of steadfast believers. Three points we're going to consider. Number one, the power of dynamic faith. When your faith acts like a dynamite that will bulldoze every mountain and every obstacle in your life. 
that kind of face, dynamic face, that has power, that has authority. And if you can just find out what can that faith do, dynamic faith, if I possess such faith, if I have such faith, if I manifest such faith every time, every day, what will be the possibilities of such a dynamic faith, the power of dynamic faith? Number two, the perseverance of dominating faith. The people that have this kind of faith, dominating faith, they never give up. You'll never give up. In your family, you will not give up. In your profession, you'll not give up. In the challenges of the Christian life, you'll not give up and you will win the victory every time in Jesus' name. The perseverance of dominating faith. Number three, the possessors of dominant faith. The possessors of dominant faith. Do you know that you can possess dominant faith? I said, you know, you can possess dominant faith, a kind of faith that never receives a no for an answer that says, here is the promise of God. Here is what God has for me in my personal life, in my family life, in my professional life. Here is the promise of God for me. And you have such a dominant faith, you become a possessor. And your life will be a successful life and a fruitful life, a powerful life, a strong life, a life of an achiever. It will happen in Jesus' name. Number one is the power of dynamic faith. What does faith do in our lives? What can dynamic faith achieve in our lives? Follow me through the Bible. Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2. I'm reading from verse 8. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 8. For by grace are you saved through faith. Stop right there for a moment. By grace are you saved through faith. When you connect grace and faith together. All that grace can accomplish, all that grace can do, it is faith that makes it happen in your life. Are we saved by grace? Get that by faith. Are we sustained by faith? By grace? Get that by faith. Are we sanctified by grace? Get that by faith. Are we empowered? energized in every situation of life my grace is sufficient for you that sufficiency of grace we get it by faith the power of dynamic faith that as you call upon the lord upon jesus who died for you on the cross of calvary and you are holding on to the work he did at calvary every sin of redemption Every sin of justification, every sin of salvation, by faith we have from the Lord. That's the power of faith, for by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God has before ordained that we shall walk in them. It's not only that we are saved by this dynamic faith, we also overcome the world. After we are saved, it calls us out of the world and it calls us into the kingdom. And by faith, we come out of this evil world and this polluted world and this perverted world and we come into the love and fellowship of the Lord Jesus Christ and with the Father. And then the world will try to introduce some defiling things into our lives. And it is the faith that still makes us overcome. In First John chapter 5, First John chapter 5 verse 4. 
For whatsoever is born of God overcomes the world. Temptations to the world, how do you overcome? By faith. All the corruptions of the world wanting to flow back into your life, how do you overcome? By faith. The worldliness that is sinking the world in judgment and damnation. How do you overcome that? By faith. And all the powers of darkness that will try to capture and try to oppress and try to destroy coming from the world. How do you overcome that? By faith. You see the power of dynamic faith that we overcome the world whatsoever is born of God overcomes the world and this is the victory that overcomes the world even our faith and that's why this dynamic faith is so important for you for you to have this dominating faith dom dominant faith and dynamic faith in your heart by that faith you're saved by that faith, you're secured and separated from the pollutions of the world. I'm looking at Acts chapter 26. Acts chapter 26, and we're reading from verse 15. Acts chapter 26, verse 15. And I said, Who art thou, Lord? And he said, I am Jesus, whom thou persecutest. But rise. And stand upon thy feet. For I have appeared unto thee for this purpose to make thee a minister and a witness both of those things which thou hast seen and of those things in the which I will appear unto thee, delivering thee. The Lord will deliver you. Are you there? Said the Lord will deliver you delivering thee from the people and from the Gentiles unto whom, unto whom now I send thee to open their eyes and to turn them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan unto God that they may receive forgiveness of sins and inheritance among them which are sanctified by what? Tell me out loud. Sanctified by faith. That's in me. That's Christ talking to Paul. He said, we're saved by faith. He said, we're secured from the world by faith. And he says, we're sanctified by faith. We're purified on the inside by faith. We're made holy by faith. And that this great second work of grace salvation being the first work of grace in our lives and then we move on and we consecrate and lay everything on the altar and it sanctifies and it purifies and it makes us holy it circumcises our heart and it says that is also by faith it tells us in galatians chapter 3 galatians chapter 3 you want the power of God in your life, the fulfillment of the promise, the feeling of the Holy Ghost in your life. All this too is by faith. Galatians chapter 3, reading from verse 13. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. For it is written, cursed said, is everyone that hangeth on a tree, that's talking about the substitutionary sacrifice of Christ for you. He bore your shame. He bore your punishment. He carried your curse. He carried everything away by his death on the cross of Calvary. Go, go on now to verse 14. That the blessings of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ. That we might receive the promise of the Spirit through what? Through faith. Saved by faith, by grace through faith. Sustained, secured, separated from the world by the power of this dynamic faith. And then we're sanctified, we're purified, we're made holy by faith. And it says now, we're even baptized in the Holy Spirit. 
were empowered by the Spirit, were energized by the Spirit through faith as well, that the promise of the Spirit will be on us, in us, by faith. Galatians chapter 2, verse 20. In Galatians chapter 2, verse 20, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God. Uh, do you understand what, what the Lord is taking us through here? He's saying that every step of the way, every situation in your life, every moment of the day, that it is by faith we're able to live a victorious Christian life. And it says, I am crucified with Christ. Total, complete identification with Christ. And it says, I live not by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and he gave himself for me. We're saved. Faith is involved. Sustained, secured, separated from the world. Faith is involved sanctified and made holy faith is involved baptized and empowered in the holy ghost faith is involved living victoriously identified with christ faith is involved when you're sick how do you get healed faith is involved james chapter 5 in james chapter 5 i read from verse 15 james chapter 5 we read from verse 15. It says in verse 15, And the prayer of unbelief, the prayer of doubt, the prayer of reading from a book. What kind of prayer? <laughs> that, that's what does it. You know, there are people, they want to pray. They'll take a book. If you have an ache, this is what to read. If you have stomach problem, this is what to read. If you have bad luck, this is what to read. If you have curses, and you, this is what to read. And then they read that. They fast. They pray. They read that. It's not the prayer you read from a book. It's a prayer of faith. You want to be delivered. Prayer of faith. You want to be healed, it's a prayer of faith. And you want to have the victory every day of your life. Toss all those books aside and then come to the Lord with faith in your heart, with confidence in your heart. Trust Him. The name of the Lord and the name of the Lord is a strong tower and the righteous runneth into it and is saved. And this day, as we pray the prayer of faith over your problem, you are delivered in Jesus' name. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick. And he and the Lord shall raise him up. And if he has committed sin, they shall be forgiven him. Confess your faults one to another and pray one for another that she may be healed the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man tell me availeth much and that effectual fervent prayer will work in your life even today and for the rest of your life in jesus name now we've seen those specific and definite things that the power of dynamic faith accomplishes in our lives. And let me show you some general things before I move on. In Ephesians chapter 6, Ephesians chapter 6, I'm reading from verse 16. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 16, above all, beyond all, more than every other thing else, above all, taking the shield of faith wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. All the wicked people in the world with all the various areas and the various ammunitions and the various instruments of wickedness. The way you are able to overcome and the way you are able to destroy and quench totally all the fiery darts of the wicked one is by faith. You understand then it's not enough to just say I'm going to church, I'm reading the Bible. You must go to a place, you must stay in a place where 
this kind of dynamic faith is being developed every time. In every Bible study, we talk about having faith in the Lord and your faith is growing. In revival, on revival days, we're talking about faith and your faith is growing. And when we come to worship the Lord on Sunday like this, we're still talking about faith and your faith is growing. And this dynamic faith will reach a level in your life that all the fiery works of the devil will be totally destroyed. They are destroyed already in Jesus' name. Matthew chapter 17. Matthew chapter 17. I'm reading from verse 20. You need this dynamic faith we're talking about. In Matthew chapter 17 verse 20 it says, And Jesus said unto them, Because of your unbelief, for verily I say unto you, That ye have faith as a grain of mustard seed, Ye shall say, Unto this mountain be thou removed, remove. And it says, Hence to yonder place, and it shall remove, and nothing shall be impossible unto you. Why will you then play? Why will you then gamble? Why will you then toss aside this faith we're talking about? The faith that is able to remove every mountain from your life mountain of sickness, mountain of infirmity. Mountain of difficulty, mountain of challenges, mountain of evil. The faith that's able to remove that from your life, it says, if you have this faith, this dynamic faith, you will say to this mountain, remove hence to yonder place, and it shall be so, and nothing shall be impossible unto me. Nothing shall be impossible unto who? Unto me. Say that again. Nothing shall be possible unto you. Amen. Amen. Mark chapter 9. Mark chapter 9, verse 23. Mark 9, verse 23. Jesus said unto him, If thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. Not to him that believed seven years ago, to him that believed some last decade, but to him that believeth, he's still believing today. He's still believing that God is a God of power. God is a God of signs and wonders. God is a God of miracles. And because that is what he believes, he believeth, he believeth, he keeps on believing impossibilities will become possible in your life in Jesus name. Romans chapter 4, Romans chapter 4 reading from verse 17. Romans chapter 4 reading from verse 17 as it is written that's the word again, as it is written it is written, it is finished, it is done say it is written say it is finished Say it is done. Amen for you. As it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations before him whom he believed. Even God who quickness the dead and call it those things would be not as though they were. That's what dynamic faith does in your life. You call those things would be not as though they were. And this afternoon, you can you already say in the evening when we get to that crusade field, this will happen, this will happen. You call those things which be not as though they were. And when we get there, that thing will happen. Yeah. Verse 18, who against hope believed in hope that he might become the father of many nations according to that which was spoken, so shall thy seed be. And being not weak in faith, being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body now dead, when he was about an hundred years old, nor neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb, he staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but he was strong in faith, giving glory to God and being fully persuaded, fully persuaded that what he had promised, he was able also 
to perform. It is this dynamic faith that brings performance in our lives. There will be a performance in your life. This afternoon, a performance in your life. This day, a performance in your life. And as we round up this month's uh, revival, miracle, supernatural crusade, there will be a performance of all those things you are expecting in your life in Jesus' name. The power of dynamic faith. Point number two now, the perseverance of dominating faith. The perseverance of dominating faith. Bring that faith into your heart, into your life. That will dominate every situation, dominate every condition, dominate every environment, dominate every thought, dominate in your mind, and dominate the physical, and dominate everything in your life. If you have this dominating faith, everything that is negative will be subdued in your life in Jesus' name. And when we talk of perseverance, it means I've started something now, and then I continue, and then I continue, and then I continue. It is that continuity that brings this perseverance and this victory and this success in our lives. There are some people, their lives are like the unfinished buildings we see in our cities. You're going across the street, a street, you see a building there. They started that building some years ago. They have left that abandoned building, unfinished project, and weeds are growing. And all these reptiles are there. And the wicked people of the world are hiding there because they are unfinished buildings. You see, there are people they lay the foundation of the building. And because they do not continue, that's why you have all those uncompleted buildings. There are many uncompleted lives. There are many uncompleted people. They came maybe to the crusade, they came to the revival. A foundation was laid in their lives. And then, because they do not continue, that's why they become like an unfinished project. God says, let me finish. Keep on coming. Let me do something more in your life until all the edifice and all the temple, all the sanctuary is raised up and everything is complete. I pray that what the Lord has started in your life, he will complete in Jesus' name. You will not be an unfinished project. You will not be an unfinished temple. You will not be an uncompleted person in Jesus' name. How will you have that completeness that you give God a chance in your life to do everything there is to be done? There is one word I want to give you, continue. Can you say that with me? Can you say that aloud? Say, I will continue. Say that again, I will continue. For the last time, I will continue. It is in that continuity we have perseverance. Let me show you. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 2, verse 42. You've read about signs and wonders in the early church. You've seen about, you've read about growth in the early church. You've seen about, you've read about the manifestation of power in the early church this is the one single word that helps them to maintain that dominating faith they had perseverance they continued in acts chapter 2 verse 42 and they continued steadfastly in the apostles doctrine and fellowship and in breaking of bread and in prayers they continued, mark that word in your Bible, mark that word in your life, I will continue. I will continue. Acts chapter 13, verse 43. Acts chapter 13, verse 43. Now, when the congregation was broken up, many of the Jews and religious proselytes, many of them, Jews and 
proselytes, that is, those who are converted to the Jewish religion, they followed Paul and Barnabas, who speaking to them, persuaded them to, what's the next word there? Continue in the grace of God. That's the word. If you're going to see stability in your life, success in your life, victory in your life, perseverance, you must continue. Acts chapter 14. Acts 14 verse 22. Confirming the souls of the disciples and exhorting them to continue in the faith. To continue in the faith. And that, that's what brings stability. That's what brings victory. That's why you find, you say, he was a convert. Now he's a disciple. And now he's a soul winner. And now he's a preacher. And now he's a pastor. And now he's an evangelist. It because they didn't just stop there. I'm born again. I'm converted. They kept on moving. They kept on moving. And it is that continuing in the faith that makes us to have a kind of sustained victory. We're reading from Acts chapter 26. Acts chapter 26, verse 22. Acts 26, verse 22. Here Paul the Apostle tells us the secret of how he didn't just remain a baby Christian, a baby believer, a baby convert. He became an apostle. How? Why? That's the word. Continue. Look at this. Acts 26 verse 22. Having therefore obtained help of God, I continue unto this day. Having therefore obtained help of the Lord, I continue. You're going to make a personal decision and make it a permanent demonstration in your life that you've come to know the Lord and you continue, you continue. And Paul the Apostle says, I have received help of the Lord. And by that help, by that grace, by that strength, by that might I receive from the Lord, I continue. In Romans chapter 11, Romans chapter 11, reading from verse 22, the secret of perseverance in our lives, the secret of this dominating faith in our lives is that we are believed and then we continue, we continue, we continue in the reading of the word. We continue in the searching of the word, understanding the word, applying the word to our lives. We continue in fellowship with the body of believers, with the children of God of like precious faith in Romans chapter 11 verse 22. Behold, therefore, the goodness and the severity of God on them which fell severity, but toward thee goodness if thou continue. Toward thee goodness if thou continue. I pray that the goodness of the Lord will remain steadfast and stable, permanent in your life in Jesus' name. But it says, if thou continue in his goodness, otherwise thou also shalt be cut off. Those who do not continue will be cut off. I will not be cut off. I will continue. I will continue. Colossians chapter 1. Colossians chapter 1. Verses 22 and 23. Colossians chapter 1. Verse 22. In the body of his flesh through, through death to present you holy and unblameable, unreprovable in his sight if ye continue. Do you see how it's repeated? This New Testament telling us every time it says, Yes, you can be victorious, and yes, you can have success. Yes, you can have everything that dominating faith can produce in your life. But the secret is that you continue. It says, if you continue in the faith, grounded and settled, and be not moved away from the hope of the gospel, 
which ye have, which ye have heard, and which was preached to every creature which is under heaven, whereof I, Paul, I am made a minister. Colossians chapter 4, verse 2. Colossians 4, verse 2. Continue in prayer and watch in the same with thanksgiving. Continue in prayer. You have any problem? Don't panic. Don't fear. Continue in prayer. You have any challenge? Don't cry. The time of crying or weeping, that time is gone now. When you pray, God will answer your prayer. Just continue in prayer. Any disappointment, don't, don't run to, you know, people. Don't go and submit yourself, submit your life to the enemies of progress. Just continue in prayer. And as you pray, every yoke will be broken. Every work of the devil destroyed in Jesus' name. If you pray alone and there's no answer, get another believer. If two officials agree together as touching anything and you ask, God will do it in Jesus' name. If you, if you uh, kind of uh, pray with that believer and the answer has not come, don't stop. The continue, continue. And get your local pastor, your local church and say, this is the problem I have. And with the pastoral anointing that breaks the yoke, let him pray, your yoke will be broken in Jesus' name. If the problem is still becoming stubborn, we have our state pastor, get to our state pastor and say, pray, pastor, I prayed myself. I've also called, uh, you know, another believer who have prayed. And then I've called my local pastor who have prayed. And it appears this thing is stubborn. A greater anointing of the state of us here will break that yoke in Jesus' name. And should in case, should in case, should in case, listen to me, that problem is still saying, I will not go. You can get to state overseer, I can get anywhere, I will not go. Tell your state overseer to report that problem to me. And when that report comes to me, I'm telling you, if I need to call you on phone, if I need to connect directly with you, your state overseer will, you know, get to you and bring you to his office. Then he will phone me and tell him to give you the phone. And when that problem hear the voice of authority, I'm telling you that sin will get away in your life in Jesus' name. There's somebody from, you know, far away country, Southern Africa. He had HIV AIDS. And then the doctors told him, you don't have a long to live. They gave him, I think, in less than three months to live. He said his life was over. And then he spoke to the national overseer over there in the country. He said I, all the money he got, he has had in his life, he collected everything together. He said, I want to travel to Lagos. And so that I will go there and then the GS will pray pray for me. And the overseer called me and said, we have somebody here, all his resources, he wants to use it to buy a ticket and come to Lagos. Are you there? Can, will you receive him? So you'll pray for him. I said, why don't we see him? I said, tell him to uh, talk to him on the phone. And then the overseer passed the phone to him. I said, what's your problem? He said, this is my problem. The doctor said, I'm going to die. HIV AIDS is killing me and they give me less than three months. I said, okay, put the, put the phone in, uh, you know, near your ear and I pray I said in the name of Jesus HIV is get out of that place and you know I said praise the Lord is done I said go back to your doctor and go and check up he went back to the doctor the doctor said what is this another report and then go to another place and then they checked him up again praise the Lord well I just want to tell you that man is still alive today Many years have passed, is still alive. Let us continue in prayer. Let's join our faith together. And I'm telling you, no problem will stand as we come in Jesus' name. Now, apart from telephone, apart from, you know, transmission, uh, you know, the state pastor has already told you that I came now. I just came. This one is just to taste, to see, to just give you an indication of do you want this? And by the grace of God, if you say you want it, I'm coming again. And then we pray now and we pray another time and pray another time until all problems in your life. 
all mountains in your life. All the challenges you are facing, everything will be wiped away in Jesus' name. All those great promises the Lord has given you that you will be on the mountain top and that you will be the head, you will not be the tail, you'll be number one, you'll not be the last. All those promises you are waiting for. This is the year. I said, This is the year. All we need to do, tell everybody, and don't be selfish about it, tell everybody, he has come, he's coming again. He has come, he's coming again. We continue in prayer, we'll bring all those mountains down in Jesus' name. Continue in prayer and watch in the same with thanksgiving. And as you continue, the grace of God will continue in your life. The power of God will continue in your life. And I pray that from this day, you'll never be the same again in Jesus' name. Number one is the power of dynamic faith. Number two is the perseverance of dominating faith. Number three, the possessors of dominant faith. The possessors of dominant faith. The question is, who can you point to? So that you'll say, if you can tell me this is a possessor of dynamic faith, of, di of dominant faith, then I will know an example is there. And I'll be able to follow. I'll tell you, the possessors of dominant faith, dominant, dominant. Dominant starts with a D, that's Daniel. And O, that's Obed-Edom. M, that's Moses. I, that's Isaiah, N, that's Noah, A, that's Abraham, N, that's Nehemiah, T, that's Timothy. And as you have this dominant faith, the faith of Daniel, no lion will be able to eat you up. They put Daniel in the lion's den. He had dominant faith. And then the king came early in the morning with a lamentable voice. Daniel, servant of the Most High God, are you still there? Can you spend a night in the lion's den and still be alive? Oh, king, live forever. The Lord sent his angel from heaven. And I'm still here. And the lions could not eat him up because he had dominant faith. This day, dominant faith is coming in your heart. No lion will be able to eat you up in Jesus' name. Obed Edom. That's the O in dominant. This Obed Edom, the ark of the Lord, was not having any place to stay. Because David was afraid because of what had happened. I do not want to bring the ark of the Lord into my house. Obed Edom said, I open my door. Bring the ark of the Lord into my house. And it says that the moment the ark of the covenant of the Lord entered into his house, you know what happened? Blessings from heaven directed from the angels from everybody in heaven everything came to the house of obed edom why don't you do like obed edom and have house fellowship in your house and have satellite in your house and have a um, home church a house church in your in your house and as soon as that ark of the covenant enters your house this year and we have a branch in your house a branch on your street a branch on your street blessings that you never dreamt of will be in your life in jesus name as the Ark of the Covenant entered into the house of Obed-Edom, all the problems of the past, all sicknesses, all infirmities, all poverty, everything cleared away. When this Ark comes into your house this year, if the overseer doesn't know you, show yourself. If the group pastor does know you, report yourself. If they don't know that you have an appointment where the ark of God can stay, you are the one to come and stay. I am here. Let the ark of God come into my house and blessings will multiply in your life in Jesus' name. 
uh, some of you newcomers, you, you have, you know, a house there, and, you know, you say that the house is available. Let them put a satellite where words of faith and words of power will be coming into that place. I have a yard there where you can put a church and where you can have the, the worship of the Almighty God. Show yourself to the leaders. And as the ark is coming, the ark is coming, blessings are following. The supernatural is following in Jesus' name. Dominant faith, Moses, that man was authority. All he had in his hand was a rod. And then God said, Moses, get up and go and tell Pharaoh, let my people go. God will use you to deliver his people. I said, God will use you to deliver his people. And Moses said, I cannot talk. Maybe you are saying you cannot talk. There is power in your life already. Because when this dominant faith that was in Moses, when it comes upon you, that rod in your hand, that thing that you useless, worthless in your hand, you stretch it like this, the Red Sea will divide before you. Water will come out of the rock to, through you in Jesus' name. I is for Isaiah, Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 8, Isaiah chapter 8 and verse 18, Isaiah chapter 8, verse 18. We're talking about dominant faith in Daniel, dominant faith in Obed-Edom, dominant faith in Moses, dominant faith in tell me, tell me, Isaiah. And Isaiah chapter 8, verse 18, it says, Behold, I am the children whom the Lord has given me are for signs and wonders in Israel from the Lord of hosts which dwelleth in Mount Zion. Any of the children there? I am the children whom God has given me are they there? Are you here today? Are you here tomorrow? Are you here continuously? I and the children whom God has given me were for signs and wonders in this land in Jesus' name. That dominant faith in Daniel, that dominant faith in Obed-Edom, that dominant faith in Moses, that dominant faith in Isaiah is coming in your heart right now. You'll never be the same again in Jesus' name dominant faith in Noah. God told Noah to build an ark for the salvation of his soul. Your family will be saved. That even though judgment, the deluge of water is going to swallow up everybody in the world, God will spare you. God will spare your wife. God will spare your husband. God will spare your children and all that belong to you in Jesus' name. And then Abraham Abraham. Abraham was getting old already and there was no child. Already 99 years of age and there was no child. And God came and said, Abraham, get ready. By this time next year, that child will come. And Sarah was old already. It was like it stopped with her as it was with women. But Abraham considered not his body now dead, nor yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. And then he believed God. He was not weak in faith, but he was giving glory to God because what God has said, he was so persuaded that God will do it and persuaded that all those who are barren, I'm going to pronounce the blessing of childbearing upon you. You'll have your children in Jesus' name. When that dominant faith comes in your life, the wife that is dry and the husband that has no count, all that you need in your body, the Lord will supply in Jesus' name. Nehemiah was a man that he saw the situation of the land of the Jews. Jerusalem was burnt with fire. All the walls were totally crumbling. And then Nehemiah heard about that. And this dominant faith came in his life. And he went to the place. And then he called all the nobles together, all the rulers together, all the people together. He said, see the condition of our city. See the condition of the temple. We can do something. In river stage, we can do something. I said, in river stage, we can do something. The walls of holiness that is broken down. In this river stage, you and I will join hands together. We'll raise it up in Jesus' name. 
And Nehemiah told them of the hand of the Lord upon him. And then they said, we are ready. Anybody that is ready there, are you ready? I said, are you ready? And the man said, they had a mind to walk. Am I talking to people that have minds to walk? Noble people, educated people, highly placed people, university people, professional people, and students everywhere. Everyone, we have a mind to walk. Can we walk together? I said, can we walk together? When you have that dominant face of Nehemiah, every wall that is broken down, we're going to raise it up in this land. Every village will touch every village. Every town will touch every town. This whole state will build the wall of righteousness in Jesus' name. We're talking about Timothy now. That's the Timothy that had the faith in the grandmother and the faith in the mother. And their steadfast faith in his heart as well. And then even though he was a youth, he said, let no man despise the youth. All young people who are here, students who are here, every one of us here, young people, something is happening among the youths, among the children this year. Give me a good Amen. Boys and girls, God will turn to become heroes in Jesus' name. You'll be the champions of the day because Timothy has shown us the mark and the evidence of dominant faith. Young and old, children and parents were joining our hands together and we're saying, nothing can stop this army of the Lord because now dominant faith, the faith of Daniel and the faith of Obed Edom and the faith of Moses and the faith of Isaiah and the faith of Noah and the faith of Abraham, the faith of Nehemiah and the faith of Timothy is now bubbling and is stirring up in your heart. I said it's now in your heart. Are you there? I can't see you. I said, Are you there? Why don't you rise up and say, This dominant faith, it will be my faith. This dominant faith, I'm going to carry this this dominant faith everywhere I go everyone every scene of the devil will crumble before you the power of Satan will crumble before you dominant faith dominant faith dominant faith of steadfast believers be steadfast believers you have started now continue you have started now continue you have started continue and say Lord here am I here am I I want to hear you pray I want to hear you pray I want to hear you pray are you saved move on are you sanctified move on are you baptized in the holy ghost move on and stand and stand and stand let's have let's all have this dominant faith this dominant faith it will affect every city in this state it will affect every town in this state, it will affect every village in the state. It will affect the whole of South South, the whole of South East, the whole of South West, the whole of, the, of Central Nigeria, Middle Belt, the whole of North East and the whole of North West. It will affect West Africa, Central Africa, East Africa, Southern Africa, North Africa. It will go beyond Africa. The fire that God is uh, now kindling in this place this weekend is going to go is going to go beyond this place. Dynamic faith, dominating faith, dominant faith, dominant faith, dominant faith. That's the faith that puts you over. The faith that gives you permanent victory. The faith that gives you the anointing that breaks every yoke. The faith that sustains. The faith that supports. And the faith that makes you victorious more than a conqueror all through the days of your life. Don't hold anything back. Your heart, don't hold anything back. Your life, don't hold anything back. Your skill, your ability, don't hold anything back. Even your very house, your compound, don't hold anything back. Let's join our resources together and build 
a temple of praise sanctuary of holiness in this stage and in this country possessors of dominant faith possessors of dominant faith the possessor be like daniel be a possessor be like obed edom be a possessor be like moses Be a possessor, be like Isaiah. Be a possessor, be like Noah. Be a possessor, be like Abraham. Be a possessor, be like Nehemiah. Be a possessor, be like Timothy. Don't play away your life. Don't throw away your life in superficial activities. Rise up. And let your life be significant for the kingdom of God. Possess dominant faith. In Jesus' name we pray. Victorious people. Cross and giants in the land. People with dominant faith, where are you? Keep those hands up. Keep those hands up. You'll keep on moving up and you will not come down to the valley in Jesus' name. Every yoke in your life broken, every mountain in your life removed. Every lion in your life silenced. And the fire of Nebuchadnezzar is quenching your family in Jesus' name. Poverty is taken away. Your pain and problems are taken away. All your tears are dried away. Barrenness is gone in Jesus' name. Failure and defeat gone from your life in Jesus' name. From this day, dominant faith will carry you through. The power of the Lord will never stop in your life. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for speaking to us even today in the church. I'm asking, oh Lord, every brother here, every sister here, every family here, every father, every mother, every married person here, and every professional here, every boy, every girl, everyone here, this dominant faith transfer into every heart. Lord, I pray all the problems they brought, I pray you take everything away in Jesus' name. In particular, that barren, sterile family, I pray right now that God will touch the husband. God will touch the wife. Miracle children, give unto them in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray for those jobless people. I pray that this dry rock will bring out water. I'm asking, Lord, that you create jobs for the jobless in Jesus' name. The person over there that is crying because you have heavy debt on you and you're running about, there's fear seizing your heart. I'm praying right now, miraculously, the Lord will pay that debt for you in Jesus' name. 
the person that went to the hospital last Thursday and in that hospital the doctor showed you he said look at this look at this and then there was no hope at all I pray that everything that doctor said I reverse it right now I pray that the power of the Lord will roll your problems away in Jesus name the person that is having the poison of a witchcraft and the poison of all these the wicked spirits against your life, I break that yoke right now. I destroy the works of the devil from your life in Jesus' name. The door is open. Come out free. Come out free. Come out free. Lord, I pray for everyone here. I pray for all our ministers, all our workers, and all our members, and all our new members. Oh, Lord, I pray from this very day, everything you hope for before, the Lord will drop in your life. Everything you have been desiring, and you're saying, Lord, when will this happen? When, when will this happen? Oh, Lord, make it happen right now in Jesus' name. Give us victory in our Christian lives. Victory in our family life victory in a professional life and victory all around this year in Jesus name we pray that this great thing you have started in every life will continue until we see you face to face Lord we're praying there will be signs and wonders there will be manifestation of power and Lord, I pray, this final day, I pray, it will bring great things upon every life in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name, we pray. And everybody said, and everybody said, I have dominant faith. I have dominant faith. I have. God bless you.